How's that going to affect someone like PJ? We know he's a Wally veteran, but that's a long time to go without a fight, especially coming in and fighting in front of a sold out crowd in your hometown at the Metroplex. That's the stuff dreams and nightmares are made of, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the co-main event of the evening scheduled in the middleweight division. The introducing first fighting out of the blue corner, standing six foot three inches tall, weighing at 195 pounds, fighting out of Outwood, Tennessee, Damian the Nightmare Mountain. And his opponent, Fighting out of the red corner, standing six foot, two inches tall, weighing in at 185 pounds. Professional worker of three wins, one loss, one draw. Fighting out of Rock City MMA from Little Rock, PJ the Daywalker Banner. All right, guys. Here we are, co main event. Crackly voice, but I'm still here with you guys. All right. Four year layoff is over for the Daywalker. Immediately comes in with a beautiful cross. Damien showing some footwork. I right know both guys are really looking to set up stuff. Go, oh. Oh, Damien came over the top, but just missed with that. He was throwing that with everything he had. Nice leg kick right there. Damien's got a herky-jerky style that's gonna be tough to deal with. Very odd striking from him. Ooh. Like I said, very, very unorthodox striking from Damien right now. I feel like it's throwing PJ off a little bit. Damien's able to push PJ against the cage right now. Right now, PJ's got that whizzer. Damien doing a good job of keeping pressure on him, though. Nice cross face right there from PJ. And it looks like he's trying to use that whizzer to... Nice knees to the end of the fire right there. Those hurt. Right now, Damien's doing a good job of keeping PJ pushed up against the cage. Right now he's got, PJ's got a, a wizard on one side, and he's fighting for that underhook. Damien's keeping a lot of pressure against the Daywalker right now. Nice knee off the cage from Daywalker. Got that under going to throw on his left arm. Oh, right there. Oh, that's nasty. He doesn't have the back, but he's still got the choke in right now. You can definitely finish from right here. Right now, it looks like Damien is okay. Gave, he gave Rocky the thumbs up. But he's going to end up on top with this. But it's a nasty neck crank. Does not feel good but he's able to survive and to get on top half guard right now on the Daywalker. Looks like PJ's gonna be able to get his back to the cage, hopefully stand up, that's what he needs to do. Damien's still doing a good job of keeping, uh, keeping his weight on PJ and keeping on the top. Oh, and now uh, we got Damien going for the back. He's got one hook in. PJ's doing a good job of hand fighting right now. I can't tell, it looked like it was almost under the chin. But Damien is on uh, the back right now with one hook in. Not a good position for PJ. PJ needs to get that underhook right now. But Damien's doing a good job of just really keeping heavy on, uh, uh, on PJ. He's not doing a lot of damage or anything. He's just keeping that weight on him, which is just raining. Yeah. 
PJ's not careful. Damien could step over the mount right now. Approaching a minute in the first round. Right now, Damien's not been doing a lot of manage. Uh, right now, PJ's got his back on the cage. Let's see if he's gonna try to use that to stand up. Looks like he is. But Damien's just doing a wonderful job of keeping the pressure on him. Oh, and Damien looks like he's going for the neck. Right now, Damien's done a great job this round of, of keeping the pressure. He used a lot of unorthodox striking at the beginning. And oh, and now PJ has used a reversal to get on top of Damien for the first time. We got 20 seconds. Let's see if PJ can separate up and do some damage to score some points in the judges' eyes. Ten seconds left. And PJ was able to end that round in a dominant position, landing a few strikes. Um, you know, Damien was able to, for most of that round, though, to really control PJ. Um, so let's see, you know, how that, that usually is gonna, gonna take the round in the judges' eyes, but you never know. Like I said, I was impressed with Damien's uh, unorthodox striking. Like he, a lot of different movements, a lot of different feints that looked like to me maybe had PJ confused a little bit. Right now, uh, PJ is getting some choice words from Luis Pena and Nathan Kirby in his corner, so that's not a bad gig at all. We got Colton Helm right now with Damian giving him some advice, and Damian's smiling, seeming very happy right now, composed. All right, guys, here we are for round two. Touch of gloves, here we go. Let's see if Damien's gonna still use, like I said, definitely a lot of unorthodox strikes. Ooh, up kick right there. And another nice strikes right there from Damien. Underhook and he's going right back for the double leg. All over PJ right now. PJ's able to get back up, but but Damien is just relentless on these takedown defense uh, attempts. PJ looks like he's trying to get a Kimura, which he can use that to do exactly that, to get the position, go to mount, and he's still ripping that Kimura, and he capped. PJ, the Daywalker Bonner, used the Kimura to reverse didn't give up on it and was able to, tap, able to tap Damian Melton, who was doing a wonderful job in that fight. A beautiful, beautiful Kimura right there. Was able to reverse the position with the Kimura and never let go of it and ripped it, forcing Damian to tap. And I know, um, you know, after that long layoff, you know, PJ's glad to get that win and just to probably get the feeling back of being in the cage. But, but super impressive late, you know, Damien was a late replacement for Tyler Jones and uh, came in and just gave PJ all he wanted. All he wanted. And the crowd loves it. Oh, backflips. They scare me every time. I'm too old. I envision knees and ankles a twisting of foot. But once again, I'm wrong. I've been wrong before a few times. Ladies and gentlemen, at 52 seconds of the second round, referee Rocky Namir stops about 
from a tap out to a come off for PJ, the Daywalker Bonner. The Daywalker, after a four year layoff, gets right back into the win column, moving to four, one and one. And finally, guys, we're moving on to the main event. Brought to you by Bad Boy Mowers, the toughest mowers on the planet, built in Batesville, Arkansas. And do we have a doozy for you at the main event tonight, guys? We've got CJ, the ground shark hunter. PJ Bonner, ladies and gentlemen. Lewis to take on TJ. PJ was on a four-year layoff. He hasn't fought in four years. He's trained for four months. He's come back and he took on a fighter, last minute notice, who has 60 MMA fights, 40 amateur, 20 professional fights. And he took it, and I know he did it because his Marine brothers are here. His family's here, his dad is here, his teammates here. Okay, PJ, I'll give you an opportunity, <laughs> if you can. He's emotional. Hoorah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thank you, everyone. We had some Thank obscenities you. yelled from the Chill. crowd, but it was Damon. funny. He didn't have to take this fight. It says short notice was literally like two days, three days. I appreciate him so much. Thank God, all my sponsors, my family, my team, my girlfriend. We have a business together. She held it down. My Marines. <laughs> Haven't seen those ugly guys in like 12 years, and they came here to support. But uh, I appreciate all the fans, everyone that's here. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you all. I miss you. So thank you, and I'm very emotional. It's been a long time, but this is very hard for me because this time last year, and anyone that's going through any depression or anything like that, this time last year I almost took my own life. Mm. To be back here in front of you guys, with family, friends, like I appreciate you guys so much. So thank you.